Welcome, this is Dr. Bertolomeshko from the Medical Futurist Institute, and I had the pleasure to publish a paper in the Journal of Medical Internet Research with e-patient Dave de Bronckhardt, one of, if not the most well-known e-patients and e-patient scholars in the world. Our paper, Patient Design, the importance of including patients in designing healthcare, tried to establish a connection between the importance of patient design and the everyday practice of medicine, the way associations and healthcare institutions design processes for patients. We argue that digital health has been a cultural transformation in the last decade or so. And during this time, more and more medical associations, healthcare governments, or even pharma companies have started to acknowledge that patient centricity is indeed key in designing processes, products, technologies for patients. But we argue that this is not enough anymore and these healthcare institutions and companies have to switch or shift from focusing on patient centricity towards patient design. And the way we tried to um, underscore this idea, this notion was that patient centricity is a passive process for patients. It's about companies, governments asking what patients think about the product, technology or process, but whether they involve those opinions in the final design would not be the decision of patients, but those asking them. For patients, it will be a passive process. Instead of this, patient design is a proactive process for patients. It means patients are involved on the highest level of decision-making in an organization. In this paper, we came up with real-life practical examples about this. We described, among many others, how the American Food and Drug Administration appointed a patient advisory board about three, four years ago, how patients uh, under the movement called Open APS started creating their own do-it-yourself artificial pancreas systems because they knew that technologically they could make it happen, but the companies, the regulators weren't ready to deploy those technologies into action. In the paper, we conclude that such cultural transformations take time, sometimes a lot of time. An example we came up with about this was Title IX, a law enacted in the United States in the 1970s that said that required schools to provide sports for girls, not just for boys. And it took almost a generation to see the results because the US women's soccer team won the first World Cup in 1991. So we argue that patient design is the key while moving forward with the digital health revolution. We think every healthcare government, every healthcare or pharmaceutical company, every medical association should have a patient advisory board, allowing patients to influence decisions, again, on the highest level of decision-making. Please check out our paper, uh, and if you have any questions for ePatient Dave DeBroncart, you can find him on epatientdave.com. If you have any questions for me, you can find me on medicalfuturist.com. Thank you.